call this regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland. Thanks, David. Yes. Regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Select Board to order at 631. Uh, we're going to talk again with uh, emergency updates, a little bit of ro uh, grocery retail. We're going to hopefully get through another bite at the apple that is a town annual meeting warrant and motions. We get some budget talk. We got a little bit of select board updates. We got some town administrator updates. We got some municipal energy aggregation and then some schedules. We should be out of here by 1030 in case anyone's watching. It should be awesome, riveting, riveting TV. <laughs> Although it's not even on TV, is it? Yeah, it is. Okay. That yes, is it is. Tough. That's true. Channel it's 12, tough, right, Epcat? Yep. Very good. So if we could uh, start with minutes of the 11th. We got some stuff done that meeting. Motion. Uh, second. Good motion made and seconded. Jeff, we're going to have to have uh, for a little for discussion for my part. We'll have to have a cheat sheet as to just where we are again on warrants and um, motions. Anyway, we did a bunch yes. of them last week. So motions made and seconded for the minutes of uh, May 11. All those in favor? All right. I, I'm going to put you guys on Hollywood Squares, actually. Hang on. Look at that. Best format. Now you're on. <laughs> okay. You're uh, having too much uh, fun with this. COVID, uh, state right. of emergency update. I see the EMD has made it back, and thank you for that. You're welcome. <laughs> How did we do this week? No new cases in Sunderland this week, which is good. Good news. Um, I received a call today from NEMA that they have another shipment of the KN95 masks. These will test at 90% efficiency, as well as a selection of cloth masks that are reusable and cleanable. They will be available for pickup at the Franklin County EOC, Greenfield EOC, after Thursday. So I will go pick them up Thursday and deliver them to the public safety complex. And that is the update. Good news. I mean, not a bad one. So I see where East Hampton is off, was offering masks out to community. Is that anything that is something that is an active discussion around here? Whether it's through the regional or other? The way I understand that is funding is available to do something like that only if the masks are going to be given out to folks who otherwise wouldn't be able to get them on their own. It's not for the general public because it's assumed the general public can get their own masks. This would be for um, disabled folks who can't come and pick up a mat or can't come and pick up a mask, we would be able to distribute masks to them. And I think that's the way it was described as well uh, over the weekend in East Hampton. I think it was a Saturday, uh, Saturday event, public safety complex, and then, I'm sorry, town office building, and then uh, distribution to those in need, as opposed to those are not free masks that, to the general public. Right. Cool. Tom, David, any questions, concerns about the current state of affairs with regard to COVID here in the state of Sunderland? No, I think uh, so far so good under the circumstances. So, uh, we had, a, I mean, we had our, our Monday mo Monday morning nine o'clock um, discussion today with the Frontier EDS. So, I I think that there's I mean, we could talk about that for probably longer than our hour meeting today. Um, there, there's a lot of stuff got going on. I mean, we have to decide if we want, if the three towns, uh, four towns want to go out and, and contract with a uh, uh, supplier to do testing. Um, you know, we talked about uh, sharing facilities for town meetings. We talked about uh, elections. 
So there, there's a lot of stuff going on. You know? So how should we approach that, Tom? I don't know. Well, first thing, we, we had our meeting without, without having to know what the governor said. So, I mean, that, that was a, that was yeah, kind of a, fair. that was a big thing with what the, what the governor was having to say. Um, and, and again, my, my opinion is Scott is that we have learned firsthand that if you, if you wait for somebody else to do something is not going to get done. So you're better off doing it yourself. And, and that's, that's and well, that's what I said. And I, that's what I said on the, on the meeting. And I said it before, if, if, if we really think testing is, is needed and if it's a determination, we shouldn't wait for the state. We shouldn't wait for the federal government. We shouldn't wait for anybody. We should just, and, and we could probably contract with Walgreens or CVS or um, Bay State Medical, some, someone, I'm sure we could get them to contract you know, contract that out. And, and if we think it's necessary, we should, we, we should look into it and we shouldn't wait for the state to do it because it seems like the state is basically saying from what we're hearing is that you're basically on your own. So unless it's changed. So yeah, no, I understand. So the, the goal of a local testing site would be to have it be continuous, to have it be once and done, to do tracking. I mean, what's the goal there? Uh, the goal is that if you, if you have, right, if you need, pe somebody wants a test, they really, they, they don't have an option. It's not, you can't, if Scott, if you want to test today, you couldn't go down to your local testing site and ask for a test. Can't you get Correct. onto the CVS one that they set up in Northampton? That's the uh, one of nine in the state, Dave. Yeah. One of nine. Hmm. So, so are, are we, I mean, is it a good thing to have, I mean, and we don't know, do you test for antibodies? Do you test for, do you test for the disease? You wait until it comes out, um, um, I mean, if you if if you're a primary care, I I've had two friends at a primary care for el elder people, and neither one of them, um, neither one of them think they had the COVID yet. Both fifty six dollars a bag. Both their uh, both their parent, their, who they're watching, came down came down with COVID. Where did they get it from? Are, so if, if you're caring caring for your 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 elderly family or what should you be able to get a test without having to jump through hoops and everything? Probably the answer is yes. If you want to try to, if you want to try to track it, and I'm not saying it's going to stop the thing, but it's a, it's a service that we should probably provide our, our residents with, in my opinion. But it's Interesting. So we have, um, Public health nurse, the COGS running one, EOC, I'm sorry, EOC is running, the EMD is, is taking care of local. What's the coordination? Where do we end up being a testing island? The COG, the COG is running a test, Scott? No, no, no. They're running, they're running a coordination effort. No, they're 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 part of they're part of their health agency. They provide health agencies well, to various towns. <clears throat> mm -hmm. they, they're that's not, what I was referring we, to. We we have we haven't contracted with them to run anything for COVID, have we? I haven't seen I haven't seen any requests. Not for they COVID. Ask, they ask for information once in a while, but they they're not running they're not running any type of uh, program for us. I would think we'd want to keep some stuff in reserve too for the fall because uh, there's a good chance that we could see a, a really a second wave come then too. So we might want to think about that. I agree. I don't know if, you know, if caseload determines, you know, when we start testing or do we, that's a good question. I think we're going to have to talk some more about that. And, and again, it was a discussion about should we look into 
contracting with a provider, not to get, no. but should we have a line ourselves with a provider if we figure that tests are necessary? Yep. Good point. That's excellent discussion, Tom. I appreciate that. And again, Scott, and I don't, leaves- you don't know. I, I, I mean, if you asked me two months ago, I would say probably what the heck are you talking about to, to now? I still, I, to tell you the truth, I, I don't, you know, I, I read stuff now. It says, well, why are you keeping schools out? Because kids can't, kids don't get the problem. They don't get the virus. And, and I'm going, well, where did the hell does this come from? I, so, so there's more information out there flying. And, and, you know, it says, well, why aren't we starting up youth activities? You know, youth sports and summer camps should be starting in three or four weeks. Then that was different than what the information we heard last week, Scott. I, yep. I just think you, point. We, what we need to do, though, is we need we need to we need to be able to put ourselves in a position that we can respond if we're asked to do something. In my, and, and I think that's what we're talking about. Cool. So we know we have a distribution plan that's sometime in the rears, but was used in the past. And is that the plan and the framework you're working off of with that with the the Deerfield Group? Um, the EDS drive-through. Um, yes. Yep. Y- yes. Well, yes, sort of. Um, we've asked our fire chief, and we asked uh, Sunderland Fire Chief and front Sunderland Police Chief uh, to come up with a plan for uh, a drive-through dispensing site at the public safety complex. So, if we have inclement weather, um, instead of sent, you know, setting putting tents up and everything or cold, we could run, we could run people through the public safety complex. So they're, they're working on putting that plan together. Um, we also would probably set it up. Most of the things would be done through the frontier EDS, which is our, our four towns because our four towns work well together and, and we have a plan that works. Um, and, and I, and I think, Right now, what they're saying is that they're expediting this year's projected flu shots, normal flu shots, to come out earlier in case there is a um, a vaccine for the COVID nineteen, so it wouldn't interfere with that. So there may there may be there may be available to towns like Frontier EDS to get vaccine so we could they, we could run that program. Brilliant. Okay, we can keep us posted on that as those Maybe. plans shape up and need uh, may, may, can, may arise. Along those lines, we have in front of us uh, from Mary Jane Handy, Director of Accounts, Massachusetts Department of Revenue, uh, authorization to have for emergency expenditures. Jeff, you want to back us into this? Sure. So one of the first things that the state did um, when they declared the emergency is they realized towns probably hadn't budgeted for emergency expenditures, so they allowed for uh, deficit spending. Um, and my we in order to do that, we need a, a plan that the select board approves of and then the director of accounts also needs to sign off on that Um, and then our accountants already set up an expense account related to COVID and we can start uh, it it allows us to basically use available funds or deficit spend if there are no funds available for COVID related expenses in fiscal year 20. Mm -hmm. So emergency declaration allows us to do this in a series of categories that are specific to the response to the COVID declaration and the town's response and use of town funds for that. Yes. And it looks like we got 17,000 for EMD site. Tom, this is kind of what we're talking about. Yeah. We got 5,000. Yeah. Um, If if we're fortunate to run, but I, I would just when I when I go over this this list, Jeff, is there any reason we don't have anything from the school? Um, I so this is, is that another this is different then? than the than the CARES Act 
application would be. Right. Um, and so this was just uh, what what the the town uh, staff thought that they would need. And I don't know, Ben, if you want to jump in and. Yeah, all of the, the school related expenses are being tracked through the business manager, Shelly. Um, and her, her guidance was just to have that, that be done separately from what is happening with the town. Really? Why would you do it that way? What do you think, Scott? Shouldn't that be a coordinated well, effort? I, I, is lost, I, I thought it said Sunderland Elementary School. I, I just may have missed something there. I, I don't know they why. They are you, our inside of our budget. I, 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 know when I, I know when I look at the Sunderland Elementary School, they got a $20,000 technology line, and that $20,000 can be – it directly comes out of care. It, it specifically talks about – it talks about using money for that, specifically about technology. So if, if we're having to train teachers or um, get computers or laptops to students or – um, you need additional IT or you need the Zoom licensing. That should all have been rolled up and we should be getting that. We should, because that, those numbers have to be in by June 5th. So I think we're talking about two yeah. slightly separate but related things. Right. This is the authorization for emergency expenditures. And then also the CARES Act provides funding for COVID related expenditures. Um, and, and we have certainly have been talking with, with Ben in the school about technology related expenses that we would apply for as part of that. Um, I think okay. so. It, so I guess we're not, we don't have any emergency expenditures at Sunderland Elementary School for COVID. No, no not That's at this good. time. I, I'm, I'm happy guy. Yeah, and, not at this time. And, and um, Jeff, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but for the um, for the CARES Act, you wanted that information for by Wednesday, correct? Yes. Okay. Yep. yep. So I'm get, I'm also gathering information from department heads in the elementary school about about CARES related expenses and what what we could be applying for there. And this is specifically what what we've spent or anticipate spending in an emergency. Uh, capacity. So CARES Act being a federal channel and this being an authorization by the Massachusetts Department of Revenue to deficit spend complicates the combining process. I'm, I'm trying to get to where Tom's coming from with respect to the town and the elementary school operating as an entity in so many areas that why would it be pulled apart in this area? Hey, Scott, can I pitch in? Sure, Peter. Um, I think that uh, what, you ha what I'm hearing here is that this is a, a request for an authorization for deficit spending. And, you know, we've been over the, the, the budget with you um, and how it's just been revised back down to level funding. And even in that, mm -hmm. you know, in the circumstances, because of the freeze that the school put on, I don't think there's a need for deficit spending. Okay, certainly in this fiscal year, and I would assume that would be the case, you know, I hope that'd be the case in the next one. So I think that there's absolutely an effort to uh, work together in terms of um, applying for whatever we can get through the CARES Act. But on this particular one, the fact that Shelley is, it's not like, to me, it's like, yeah, Shelley is very carefully keeping track of all stuff that might be eligible for reimbursement, okay? but it's not in order to get deficit spending in order to be able to do the stuff. So okay. I don't think, Thanks, Peter. Appreciate I, I, don't, I think there's been real good coordination and we just have to make sure, you know, I see something every time I see something that, you know, maybe coming from Jeff or something like that. I just want to be sure that when he is circulating that with the department heads in town, that Ben and probably Shelly are also getting copies of stuff because absolutely, you know, we're all together on this. Right. Great points. Great points. Tom, does that flush it out for you? This looks like it's for the, you know, uh, Scott, I police, said fire, piece and the town we'll see, office. We'll see where it goes. I, I mean, I, I would just, I would just, I would just hope we don't see this. 
I mean, I, I would think that while we have an opportunity to do it now, the state, the state's there. Um, I, I would hope that, you know, if I, I, I guess that means there's no extra overtime being spent. Uh, there's no additional costs that are, that are being incurred that, that'll run on deficit. No, hey, who knows? I hope, I hope. Because I, I, I just say now is the time to capture it. Not it's not to say well later on saying geez we should have we should have done this or we should have done that. I I think we want to try to capture those expenditures and and bring it out and and have an honest discussion. Show it to the light of day. Whatever. Ben. Yeah, there's been. I mean, so so we cut, go ahead. No, with with school closed, there's been no um, overtime whatsoever. Like custodial custodian hours have been cut back significantly, um, and we've just started to to roll that back. Um, actually, this this week to uh, full eight hour shifts, and whatever cleaning supplies that we had at the time um, have been able to fulfill what what our need was especially with there's just there's no traffic in the building right now um, except for teachers going in to uh, get materials and, and make copies and I think if, if this helps okay. at all Tom I, I think what you'll see hopefully in the next week or so is another list of the uh, um, prioritized application for the for the cares act funding and i would imagine that that would include some technology requests from the elementary school um and some there would be some overlap because i think that you know some of this is office improvements um that like desk shields and i think that you'll see that pop up again on that list so there will be some overlap and maybe that'll help clarify If I may, Mr. Chair. Hey, AMD. One of the things you might want to think about with opening back the elementary school is the lack of, if the water hasn't been running, you know, you've got to get, make sure the water's going to run fine. You got to make sure the drains are going to be fine. You know, thinking ahead, anticipating, you know, because the building has been closed, it's going to get warm in there. If there's any spots of wetness, what could happen if there's spots of wetness and the building is closed? You should think far ahead about budgeting for those kinds of expenses. Great point. So Ben, the, the building still runs automatically from HVAC perspective, right? You're still maintaining temperature and humidity. And yes, and our, and our custodians have still, they've been there on a daily basis. So they're, they're still doing walkthroughs, um, you know, five, five days a week. So, it's, it's not like it's, you know, since the afternoon of March 13th that it's just been still inside, you know? Make them run some water. In yeah, the point. Yep. Very good point. Thank you, Lori. Those, those traps will dry up and you'll have bad things happen. Great point, actually. Okay. Jeff, uh, any more discussion needed for this? This looks like it's on the town side. Go ahead, Tom. It, what I would recommend, if you haven't been running it water in the in the school, then that's not then someone's not watching the maintenance of the school. It needs to be done. It absolutely has to be done. And I would recommend that if that hasn't been done, that recommend that you talk to the Sundland Water Department and have them bring in some uh, test trips so they can test for uh, chlorine, residual chlorine, and free chlorine, and have them run the run the water until at the far end of the building until you. Uh, you start to see a uh, um, residual and free chlorine readings come back, and, the, and probably in the town, you have to do that, and and it it needs to be, and probably ask them to uh, perform a, uh, a biological test also. But that's 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 normal, good procedure right now. Great suggestion, Tom. Thanks for that. Ben, you want to talk to you want to talk to the folks of the district? Yep. Yep. I'll I'll touch base with the facilities director and our custodians. 
to double check where, the, where we're Great. at with that. Have them touch base with Fred and company and we'll take care of it. Make sure that it's safe to get back in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Jeff, in this case here, is this time sensitive? Are we expecting to bundle any more? And if it's not time sensitive is 17,000 for dispensing site equipment and wages. 5,000 for public building safety improvements, desk shields, employee, PPE, mask gloves, et cetera. 5,000 for cleaning supplies, sanitizing wipes, disinfectants, et cetera. 5,000 for deep cleaning of buildings. 5,500 for elections and town meeting equipment supplies, mass sanitizing wipes, et cetera. $500 for IT expenses. Does that capture it all at so this point? At this point, that, that is our, our our best estimation of, of what our costs would be through the end of fiscal year 20. Um, and my understanding is that we will, we, we can change it if, it if it turns out that as our EDS plan evolves, it's gonna require significantly more equipment. Um, my understanding is that the director of accounts is understanding of emergency spending and that this is a best guess at this point. We don't know exactly what we're gonna spend and it can be amended at a later time. Uh, and we're not committed to spending all of this money either. It's just an authorization to do so. Um, and so there is a, a bit of a padding factor in, in those numbers so that um, we know ahead of time if we're gonna need to request additional authorization to spend. And lastly, Jeff, what's the accountant's take on this? He loves deficit spending. Yes. Well, um, so I think that he would appreciate it. And I've spoken to some other towns who, who did this earlier on um, in, in April, just so that they could keep track of the accounting. Right now, what we're doing is paying out of existing, paying any, any sort of expenditures out of existing budgets. Um, so that's sort of over depleting them. And so I think he would appreciate having these accounts to be able to correctly track them. And I think um, I don't want, want to speak for Lori, but I think that, you know, having clearly one account where all emergency spending comes out of for FEMA reimbursement purposes would also be helpful uh, to, to more easily track and apply for those types of things. Great point. Any, any other discussion on, on this piece? If not, I'll entertain a motion to sign a letter to Director of Accounts at MDOR uh, asking, requesting these amounts for deficit spending in response to COVID-19 for this budget year. Motion. David, I think you're muted. I heard it, right. but it was not Second. quite live. <laughs> Motion's made and seconded. Oh, thanks. Thanks very much for the lively discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I got to figure out a new hand thing for the voting. Jeff, I'm going to go get him in here, okay? Well, there. And Dom, there. David, did you guys vote? <laughs> okay, I got a Tom. thumbs up from Tom. That's kind of cool, actually. We'll declare that three to zero. I can hear David through the other side. I'm not so sure who he's talking to, but he's in there somewhere. Yep. Okay, uh, next up, if we could, if, here you are, if we could talk a little bit about uh, the request for the grocery retail from the Blue Heron last week. I see we've got the, the commish dead center. He's in, he's in, he's in the, uh, the always right answer spot according to the Hollywood Squares right. rules. And uh, Dana's here right. and Steve Kroll's here. So, so right. the request about grocery and retail, the uh, concerns came about health and then zoning and the question they have a common bit to the question was, you know, does this prohibit? Are there changes or challenges or things that need to be done before? So uh, I leave it to uh, Dana, Steve and Tom at this point. Well, uh, I'll chime in first, uh, you know, from, from a zoning perspective, uh, you know, we look in our handy dandy business use tables, there's nothing like this. Uh, you know, there's 
there's a whole bunch of different restaurant uses, uh, takeout, uh, you know, drive-through and, and such. Uh, and, you know, a, even if this could be shoehorned, I think, into any of those things, uh, you know, going any sort of, uh, you know, special permit process is time consuming, even if we try to expedite it in some way. Uh, and I, I think it's a force fit to begin with. Uh, I, I, I put out a, a little bit of a, uh, an email earlier and, uh, you know, saying that, you know, I think, uh, you know, under the circumstances, uh, you know, something, of, uh, you know, that some sort of a, a, a executive action or emergency action on behalf of you know, by, by the select board could, you know, uh, per permit this uh, with conditions and, uh, you know, that, that and, and, and a sunset clause that, you know, this would only be during, uh, uh, during this emergency, uh, maybe expire at the end of the emergency. And I don't know if that, that is such an event as defined by the governor, but, or whatever, uh, or 30 days after the end of the emergency. Uh, I think uh, I saw that, uh, you know, Tom put it, in a, Tom Quinlan put in a, a, a good point about, uh, uh, you know, maybe, uh, you know, if the selectmen decide to, to do this and that's the approach to go, uh, that, you know, maybe put a, a, a time window on that, you know, give it 30 days and just in case to, for re-review, just in case something unanticipated or there's a something that we just didn't ex ex expect and there's, so we have to have make a, a, a adjustment. Um, the information. Yeah. You know, that, the, the Jeff had sent around a, a, a couple, uh, something from Somerville. I thought, uh, you know, sort of was kind of a good template maybe to work off of if that's the direction that the selectmen just decide to go. And, uh, you know, there's, there's my, my two cents. Uh, uh, but I'd like, you know, I don't know, Dana, if you, you know, I sort of. Hey, Steve. Steve, do you yeah. have the do you have the original zoning board decision on on the blue heron on the special permits? I don't I don't have it in front of me, but they did get a special permit to operate. Uh, they do have uh, they have they are permitted to have that outside dining area. Uh, I but, don't believe uh, I don't believe it. it it mentioned any sort of takeout because that was really not the way they were anticipating and that's really a sit-down restaurant I, I i i think if you look at if you look at the the zoning board's decision i think it it's um it's open enough that you could drive a big truck through it let's put it that way and and i think with with the way the decision was the way the decision was written you could probably enter because it it says something about lawful uses or something to that effect. Um, and, and I would, I think probably Jeff may have the governor's um, actual executive order, but I think that they, I think he's super, in the executive order, they supersede bylaws, I think also. So I, I, but it'd be nice to see, it'd be nice to see what the original decision was because I think it, you could you could take that decision. I think you could allow the the, the retail of uh, grocery items there. Cre if you're creative, you don't and, and you don't have to be that creative. That's all right. Um, from my point of view, we should be doing everything we Dana, can. Anything with bird to planning? Yeah. From my point of view, can you hear me? Yep. yep. Yes. We, we should be doing everything we can uh, to support local business. And if this is what we have to do to support local business, we're not we're not advocating uh, that uh, they uh, they change their business model. Only that they find a way to keep their employees employed uh, in the interim. So let's use the example of uh, mobile homes. We don't we 
specifically prohibit mobile homes in Sunderland. But, but if my house burns down, the selectmen can issue me a permit to live in a mobile home while I'm rebuilding my house. I, I, I would liken that to, to, uh, to this example. Yeah, we had that example come up not that long ago. Yeah. That's a very good example with the, um, with the COVID for nurses. It is, um, before I left Southampton, it was actually one put for the nurses and a mobile home is not allowed, but it was um, so they could stay at home, you know, near the family at least. It was actually a mother daughter nurse that lived at that residence. So that was something that, you know, Board of Health, myself and the board was able to allow. Yep, I agree. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with you, Dana. I, I and, and when I looked at the when I looked at the ZBA decision, original decision, I think that get it. I think we very easily could allow it. I, I think the point of the emergency declaration is it gives the municipality, it gives the local elected officials uh, the discretion to make. Uh, decisions in these extenuating circumstances. Agreed. Now, I, and I would approach, I, I would uh, lean more towards, you know, again, the, uh, the, the selectman approach. I mean, Tom, uh, you know, I'll go back and look at the, uh, 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 the, the, the decision. Uh, I would hate to uh, to take the precedent of of, uh, of of saying like somehow we can interpret that and stretch that to you know to drive a truck through as as you say uh, I, I didn't think we were that loose with uh, you know with the conditions that what we granted uh, the, the the blue heron to operate at uh, and. Uh, you know, I think, the, like like Dana said, uh, I think the the, the 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 governor's declaration, even even bef you know before I saw the stuff from Somerville or, or whatever that Jeff Jeff circulated, you know, said things that you know, uh, you know, I not the wording was maybe not quite right, but to re waive or relax zoning bylaws in this particular situation, or in this emergency situation, so. Uh, uh, you know, Dana's example about the mobile home, uh, you know, that, uh, of course, that, that happens to be in the zoning bylaws. Uh, I used that when I was refurbishing my house. I lived in a mobile home for, for uh, uh, you know, seven months. Uh, so I, I, you know, rather, you know, because I, I, I think, you know, we talk about other restaurants perhaps wanting to do this. I don't want to have to look, well, what do we do about uh, a, a restaurant that, it's already a yes. Uh, there's, there's no special permit to work off of. Uh, you know the uh, the you know the Go Ten. They they have a special permit there in the village, village residential. I mean, it gets really murky quick if you start looking at uh, that. I think it's you know it's it's a little bit of a cleaner way to to to, to have the the selectmen. Uh, you know, I think that that that's probably, in my uh, humble opinion, the best vehicle to use uh, uh, in, in this case and in, in, in any other restaurant case that may want to do something similar. Jeff, have we heard from uh, Steve Ball and the Board of Health about their conversation? They had homework leaving last week with the Blue Heron about what steps should be taken. As it was described, we're talking about dry goods, cryopacked meats from their suppliers. They're not dressing material on site. Uh, and I think it was Caitlin who was pretty clear saying that, you know, that their, their track record is impeccable. So have we heard anything from the Board of Health about the change in this model for them? And I agree with Steve, it's gotta be somehow established as a temporary model during the state of emergency. Uh, we have not, uh, they had a meeting that began about half an hour before yours. Oh, uh, okay. And it we'll looks wait. like the board of Cindy might have more information on that. Her hand is up. Okay. So for zoning planning and zoning enforcement, what I'm hearing is, you know, the state of emergency board, but I like the, I like that. That's what I'm hearing. 
board authorization inside the confines of an existing permit. That said, from Steve's point earlier, should it have a sunset or a revisit period that says, hey, pick a date, uh, make one up. August 1st, it either ends or we revisit it or September 1st or whatever. Jeff, do you have the executive order? From Somerville? No, it says that from the, from the governor. Um, I can, I, I looked, I looked it up. I didn't see anything specific that it overrode local, uh, bylaws. I think that it did say that you, it, it gave communities the, uh, as Dana said, sort of the discretion, the flexibility to do that, but it didn't outright, um, Just take that, that control away. Or, or make that decision for any community that they wanted to decide otherwise. So I think that there would still need to be local action. May I just interject? Sure, hop in there. Um, I know Steve Ball has met with the Blue Heron folks and um, he is out ill for tonight's meeting, so didn't get to participate in the conversation and he's been, uh, had another emergency setback this week. So, but um, he will be reporting whatever they've discussed with the Board of Health or with the Blue Heron shortly, but they didn't take a vote tonight on anything. Okay. Thanks, I appreciate that update. So uh, path forward, should we do something that allows for the Blue Heron to sell groceries as requested contingent on uh, Board of Health approval for their steps or steps needed and put a date on it. And again, I say I throw out there for the discussion August 1st because nothing's happening fast these days. Yeah, I think that's fine. And then like Steve said, it makes, you know, you've got a clean, crisp decision in that sense. And even if we don't do, didn't need to do it, that's all right. And then no harm done there. Tom, what do you think about August 1st? Uh, and then, you know, if it's humming along in July and everybody opens back up, then, you know, the, the, it ends uh, or we revisit. Uh, Scott, I, I'm just reading what the, the city of Boston's doing, okay? And, 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 yep. and, Dana, and Dana, what he said about supporting businesses is exactly right. And, and that's, and, 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 I, and I can't believe, I personally, I can't believe that we haven't made the decision already to help, to help the, the town, uh, you know, the town businesses out. So, I mean, and, and basically the restaurants you have to, you know, in Boston, you have to um, follow your, you have to follow the strict um, food safety guidelines. You follow the, they have clear guidelines on packaging and labeling and and you re reduce to you know designate that the restaurant has to stay less than 10 people can go inside although blue heron says they'll do a curbside um and, and i i i basically think that we that we should allow it and, and I, we should do whatever we can and and no no different then we should be every day. We should be talking about how the Go Ten, Bridgeside, uh, Bubs, Demo, Subway, Blue Heron, the Sunland Corner Store, Frontier Pizza—they're all open for business, people, and and we need to support those businesses. And 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 if you don't know if they're open or not, you you look on their on, on the thing or or give a telephone call. I I don't know why we're spending so much time on this, Scott. What it it. We should make a policy that they can do it, and let's do it. it let's. Why are we talking about this? And and they're not going to so generate a million dollars. And 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 my thing about with Steve earlier about the 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 what they passed is because I I don't think you should that you want to drive a truck through the thing, but at the same time when you read the thing it says any basically any lawful purposes that could be used. We can allow groceries to be taken out. That's allowed. We should say it's allowed, and just do it. Where it, you know, I, I, and, and, and if, and if, if a restaurant wants to put outdoor dining in through the COVID thing, it should be allowed. We, we, we should be helping these people not and helping our residents, helping our neighbors make this happen. 
not slow it down. We're two weeks, we're already this two weeks now or a week into it plus, and we still haven't made a decision. That's a, that's a week where they could be putting people back to work. It's so just, it's to be clear, they asked, it can be frustrating. Think, to be clear, it's, it's the first business should, that's should asked taking this that's, amount of time. To be clear, Tom, it's the first business that's asked for any variations. It's the next scheduled meeting, and we agreed on the timeline. So okay, we can be just as frustrated the as we want. The city of Boston but the reality can do this, is, and we can't. The city of Boston can do this, and we can't get our act together to make it happen. Well, I, really? don't know I take Tom, exception I to that. I mean, I think, you know, just like Jeff says, I mean, the request just came in, in my inbox uh, like a week ago, and we're, we're acting on it. I mean. So, Steve, Dana, Tom, I appreciate you asking, uh, rising to the occasion that the uh, applicant asked for. Uh, any questions about groceries at the Blue Heron? And I'd like to ask about a timeline. Yesterday. Well, so you think August 1st for a revisit? But, you know, and the timeline, you know, people are mentioning August 1st. Uh, you know, that's fine. Uh, one, of, one of the questions I had, and I don't know, if, uh, you know, I can't imagine there's going to be a, 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 you know, you know, that much traffic involved, but, uh, uh, you know, I wonder, you know, I, I, I'd also mentioned, uh, I prefer to have the uh, pickup of the, the, of the uh, uh, groceries be done in, in the rear parking lot rather than on Main Street. But uh, I, you know, I you know, just, just thought of traffic and safety. It's one of those things that, uh, you know, the zoning board typically looks at. That's fair. I'm sure in their business plan, they don't want people parking in the front either, but I hear you, Steve. We can work with them on that. Certainly put it as a request. Okay. Any other discussion? If not, is there a motion? Motion. What do you just motion? To grant their request to sell groceries until August 1st. And then if, if it works, great. We can simply extend. Second. Motion's made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you, fellas. I appreciate you taking the time out. Well, thank you. <clears throat> Tom, have your, have your administrator call our administrator. Yes, we have another Zoom meeting tomorrow at 10, I believe, together. Uh, Very week good. From tomorrow. Oh, it's a week from tomorrow. Okay. All right. Just that's a week that too long for... at this speed. <laughs> we, we, met, we talked last week, and uh, everybody's getting a little information together, so we are working on it. So uh, thank you for look, you know, taking that opportunity. You're so welcome. Thanks so much. Let's Thank jump you. down to the municipal aggregation. Aaron, see if we can see if we can uh, do this in a quick fashion so we can circle back to budgets. We know we have a request in front of us, and I'd like to keep this in like the five minute window. Hey, Aaron. Okay, what would you like to know? Um, I believe the time so, administrator oh, Jeff, has. Our Forwarded you the information that we've received from Colonial Power Group. Yep. And last Thursday, the Energy Committee meeting met and looked over this material, and we decided to uh, figure out what we felt the best path would be and recommend uh, certain. Uh, products for both the default product and opt-in products for the town. Obviously, the decision is up to the select board, not the energy committee. But uh, if you'd like, I could uh, relay what uh, what our recommendations are, and then you can respond to that. Sure, go ahead. Okay. 
So looking at the price schedule that they gave us and bearing in mind our survey from last year, what town residents said they wanted, they wanted um, basically what we were calling cheap and green, as much renewable energy as possible, though trying to stay at a price below every source's uh, basic service rate. Now, due to the current pandemic and also the current price war between Saudi Arabia, Arabia and Russia, um, oil and gas prices are at an all-time low and that affects electricity rates. So Eversource just went out to bid for their winter rate and as I had feared, it actually came quite low because prices of our electricity are low right now. Eversource's rate is 0.0902, so nine cents per kilowatt hour. That's very low, mm -hmm. it's lower than it's been for several years. Um, that rate is not sustainable according to, uh, awesome. yep, there we have the- Thanks, Jeff. Yep. The schedule. So very likely in the, in the winter, that price will rise again due to um, curtailment of supply so as to uh, jack up the price because right now the price is probably below production costs. So in trying to honor the town's request for some type of renewable, en renewable energy below every, every source's rate, according to that table, the only two options are um, uh, the standard retail electrical supply, which is at 0 0.08934, right there. Yep. Or, or from Dynergy, the, that's the lowest bid, 0 0 0.08860. Mm -hmm. Or right below that, the next product, which is National Wind, that comes out of Texas, which is 100% green product. And that's 0 0.08948. Those are the two products that are, at this point, less expensive than Eversource's rate that will kick in on July 1st. Um, now, one of the things that Colonial mentioned to us and asked us to notice is that these curves are very flat. If you look over the, the uh, length of contract from five months, 12 months, 18 months, there's almost no price difference. It's basically flat. The prices aren't going anywhere over the next three years. Um, this is unprecedented. Uh, and I think it's, again, due to the current situation. So what we're recommending, the Energy Committee is recommending that we start out for the first five months with the 100% uh, green product, the national, national wind. And then for the remaining 36 months, we would then switch to, at the bottom of the page, um, the uh, mass class one RECs plus RPS plus 25%. And that would be where Jeff is indicating 0 0.10379. Now, of course, we don't know what Eversource's rate is going to be next winter, but uh, we believe, as, as uh, Colonial has indicated, that it's not going to be as low as it is now. The winter rates are typically higher. The last two winters, the rate was uh, 0.1166. It may not be quite that high this year, but we believe that that price um, is a reasonable average price um, and uh, is probably the best bet at supplying uh, renewable energy to our residents and businesses at, at an affordable rate, uh, which is what we, we've been asked to do. So Again, the recommendation for the default product is the first five months, National Wind, and thereafter for the next 36 months, Mass class one Rex RPS plus 25. Then uh, so the we're also entitled to at least one opt in product for people who may decide they want uh, more renewable energy than, than we're offering there. And um, our chair, Scott Reed, suggested. Why don't we have two opt-in products, one of which would be 
the national wind product again for the entire 41 months. So that's what we're calling, um, you know, cheap and green long range, though not local. And uh, the other product that we might uh, offer for an opt-in would be uh, the mass class one Rex at 100% green. And that would be the most expensive product, but the greenest and the most local product, which was also a consideration of many people who responded to our questionnaire. So again, the default product would be uh, cheap and green as best as we can see it. And the opt-in products for those who want it would be, both of them would be 100% renewable, one cheaper, not local, and one more expensive and regional. Those are our recommendations. Thanks, I, I appreciate that, uh, the level of information here. So we're looking, uh, Cliff notes, 36 months is the longest bite, right? And the yes. category we've got here is across uh, either RPSs plus 5%, RPSs plus 25%, you've got RPSs at 50 and then 100%, and then the Eversource default is an opt out for people who want to stick with Eversource. Correct. So our, one of our discussion points was about long-term price stability and it, happily, it looks like they're all relatively stable for a 36 month window. Which is why we're taking advantage of that um, to go for the entire 36 months, given that those curves are so flat, why not lock it in for as long as we can, because those prices, um, I don't think Eversource can match those prices, if not, not in the long term. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jeff, you got any, any particular opinions on this? No, I just a, a couple of points that I think are important. If it turns out that, uh, first, these are indicative prices. They're not final prices. We're not going to have the final prices until Wednesday, at which yep. point we're going to have to make a final decision. So, so we don't anticipate there are going to be changes or significant changes. And the other thing is, um, if it turns out that energy prices are lower, they also told us that at any point we can go back and, and rebid the project if, it, if we can get a lower price later. Um, so we're not necessarily locked in if energy prices remain low. So I think and this is the package that's being sent to all the participating communities with the folks that we're dealing with as the aggregation folks? Correct. As a group of 13 towns, yep. all we have to agree on collectively is the, the length of contract, the term of contract, and mm -hmm. the supplier the actual product each town can decide on its own, which, how much green and, um, and basically which combination of products they want for opt-in and opt-out. Right. Uh, Tom, David, comments about this? I'm all set, Scotty. So what do you think? Take the recommendation and go with that for the first, I, I, I like the window of getting to winter. And then I also like the, duration, meaning the 36 months, one thing that was an area of concern, the board, as well as some people in the questionnaire expressed was price stability is important. All right. All right, it was stability and, and affordability, and then being mm -hmm. able to squeeze in among those two things and as much green as you can. So we're at 90020 currently, that's Wamiko, people who are going to, can, can default back to Eversource. Uh, well, we're not there yet. Point. That will start in July. Right, right now, right. we're that's still the, at 11.6. Right. So their value, their, their cost, of, cost of power purchase drops for their July contract. Correct. Now, one thing that came up in our discussions at the Energy Committee was, well, why not go with National Wind? Or the whole thing, which is you know one of our opt-in products. Why don't we make that the default? Because it's 100%, and it's the prices are cheaper than all the other products. And we talked that through for a little bit, and we decided that um, although that might be a good solution in the short run, and that's why we're doing it for the first five months of the default product, um, we felt that there were some problems with 
making that the default product for all 41 months. As I said, the National Wind is not a local product. It's based in Texas. Uh, state of Texas actually subsidized su subsidizes their wind industry. So they actually don't need our money to, to invest in themselves. They're going to expand no matter what. Um, so whatever money we send over there doesn't stay in the local economy. That's a strike against it. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't incentivize any local production of, of renewable energy here. It doesn't incentivize uh, offshore wind or solar here in Massachusetts. We're just sending the money out of state, out of our region. Um, Okay. You know, buying mass class one recs, on the other hand, does do that. And finally, okay. electricity generated by National Wind does not feed into our own electrical grid. It uh, yeah, just benefits somebody credits. somewhere, obviously, and it reduces greenhouse gas emissions somewhere, which is a good thing. But residents here would not be using any more green energy than they did when they were buying electricity from Eversource. Mm -hmm. And we think that's an important consideration. So that's why after the first five months, we suggested switching to a product that has more Massachusetts class one uh, renewable energy certificates. And we opted for the 25% as sort of the, the most we could squeeze in in terms of uh, class one recs without going too high in price. So that was a discussion okay. of national wind versus Massachusetts class one recs that we had and we decided in the end to to make the national wind all the way through as an opt-in product for for those who wanted renewable energy as cheap as possible and didn't care about local so much. So people who want that can choose it and uh, people who want to go to the gold standard of 100% mass class one recs <coughs> could choose that too if they want to pay that amount and again the price isn't exorbitant but it's more expensive than <laughs> Other products here. So, that's, for, that's, for people I who just want to explain that as our, our rationale for thinking through our recommendations. I appreciate that, Aaron. Thanks so much. Okay, uh, discussion of the board. If not, is a recommendation to accept the rec to accept the recommendation first five months with retail through National Wind, and then the remaining five months. I'm sorry, the remaining 36 months through uh, mass class recs plus 25%. Motion. Second. Motion's made and seconded. Uh, so right now your Eversource defaults are 0 0.09 cents. Uh, the first, the remaining, so 1231, it will be if you participate in this program and choose not to opt out. And again, you can opt out of this program and stick with Eversource is going to be 0.89 cents and then from there it will go to uh 10 cents a kilowatt hour for the remainder of the 36 month window motions made and seconded all those in favor aye aye opposed oh i didn't see a thumb up tom it's all good I read my no, he did, he did. <laughs> You went back to the hands. Okay. I was looking. I was looking down. <laughs> I can't find. It. I can't find it because I've been typing, Scott. Hey, Mr. Mr. No, Chair. So, one one quick thing before we leave the the wind. Um, do you want um, David's been been following this? Do you want him to be authorized to sign it on Wednesday when we get the final pricing? Do you want to authorize me to sign it? I'll I'll certainly be on the call to get to get that. Um, but we do need so I think that I think that opens up to an unopened, un, excuse me, unfinished piece of business. And that is that you weren't appointed procurement officer until you completed your procurement training, MMPA training. And you're now MMPA certified and you can be our procurement officer, correct? Uh, no, I, I, I've, <laughs> I've taken what? the three required courses. Oh. Three day course, um, but I've only done the the overview so far, so I'm not technically certified yet. Although I do have a certificate of completion for the course I did. You took the test and passed it. <laughs> that 
that. I did. Congratulations, <laughs> Jeff. You it bought is. the answers at the procurement test. That's yeah. good. I made sure to get a couple wrong just so there's no suspense. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if it's a prerogative of the board, the chair can sign on Wednesday. Now, okay. Did you also that, want to make a nice. decision on the opt-in product as well? The, the opt-in opt would yeah. be the remainder of the 100% renewable? Yeah, we can have up to, I think, two or even three opt-in products. I think the fewer, the better, so as to make it less confusing to people. Um, two so possibilities. Is the opt-in the mass class record? Yeah, the two opt-in products we recommended were both 100% renewable, one of them being the wind and the other one being the mass class one rec. So for the, for the, from the perspective of, you know, the price and stability, the 100% mass class one is gonna be a 13, 13 cent kilowatt hour product basically across its spectrum. And then the 100% wind would be a 9.96 cent per kilowatt hour product across the 36 hour window. Your window suggestion is we have both up, yeah. of those? Yep, those are the opt-in products, which Colonial tells us very few people actually sign up for. Uh, so we're not gonna get a groundswell of people doing that, but we just wanted to have it there for people who want it. There will be some people doing it, I think. I frankly don't have an opinion on it. If you want to have that as an opt-in, I'd be happy to entertain a motion. Motion. Yeah. Second. Motion's made and seconded to allow for the opt-in uh, part of this program, be 100% green product uh, through the T-Bone Pickens, former company known as National Wind. <laughs> and then uh, the 100% Massachusetts, that was T-Bone Pickens. No, I'm not kidding. T-Bone Pickens, you got, it. you got it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. And then 100% mass rec one. Those are optional opt in for people who are interested. And we'll put this out on our website and as well as the mailing that comes from our folks at Colonial. I heard a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three to zero, please. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you very much, gentlemen. So, Mr. Okay. Chair. Next up. Mr. Yeah, Chair. Tom. I'd like to revisit the uh, our last uh, thing about restaurants, please. Sure, I, I go like ahead. to I like to, I like to form I like to formalize a declaration so there's no no uh, question about what we're what we're doing. Okay, let's do it. So I and I, and again, Jeff can come up with the preambles about all this the. Uh, the Where local, at? state, and federal declarations of emergencies <laughs> that were uh, written. So he's a, he can be the wordsmith on that. But I'd like to I'd like to make a motion. This is concerning restaurants serve as grocery stores zoning and or licensing requirements that would otherwise restrict or prohibit the sale of grocery items from restaurants or cafes are hereby temporarily suspended until further notice or until the declaration of state of emergency in the town of Sunderland is rescinded in order to sell grocery items as part of a pickup or delivery service businesses that have not previously sold direct to consumer grocery items must provide a detailed operation and safety plan for the storage and distribution of groceries to the to the uh board of selectmen the board the select board of town of sunderland for review and approval restaurants selling grocery items pursuant to this order may only sell such grocery items on a pre-packed or pre-bagged or takeout or delivery basis. Restaurants shall create menus available online to permit customers to order grocery items online or via the telephone prior to collecting or receiving such items. This order does not allow restaurants to operate as a brick and mortar grocery store and that would take effect tonight. Like immediately? Or whenever. Come up with yeah, a Yeah, tonight. Right. And then, and then, and basically, yeah, fine. basically, if somebody, if a restaurant wants it, they have a plan that we reviewed by us, we would send it to the uh, Board of Health for their comments and the building inspector. But, but we, the, like, I, I appreciate what Steve Cole said before. 
Um, it, it, we're just temporarily suspending the uh, uh, bylaws. Yeah, I think that's, that's a, a good wholesale approach. It lets it go across all the businesses and it, just, it lets people ask if they choose to. Um, David, what do you think? Yeah, I think that's fine. And it, it covers you know, all the things that we need yeah. to and, and then gives us that flexibility. And then we've got an official statement about it. So if there's a question or whatever, we've got it stated out there. Jeff, how many whereas is that going to take? I could probably do it in only three. Ooh. Oh, nice. Don't hold me to that, though. Yeah. Very good. So, uh, do you want a second? <laughs> Tom's, Tom's uh, draft. Yeah, a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Right. Wait a second. Three to zero. Declare oh, three did to you zero, click please. The Thanks, Tom. <laughs> How come my thumb didn't come up? I don't think you see it. I'm looking. Wow. <laughs> okay. So we got thank that. You, we jump up to oh, thank you, Tom. So uh, articles. I'd like to the cliff notes of our homework on the articles, please. Before we dive into budget. What's left? Obviously two and three. Yep. Um, See, there was, um, I think the, the article. Uh, two, three, um, four, five, mm -hmm. six. Capital six. And I think we're good until uh, seven's article. a money article. Seven oh, is sorry. a yep. Yep. article, but I think you did that last. Yep. Week. Move to recommend. Yep. Yep. Um, then so the CPAs are all done. Not quite. Uh, 13 was about the design of the pedestrian and bicycle pathway system. And there was, mm -hmm. That was not yet, so the board hadn't taken any action on that one yet. That was passed. Over. Okay. Recommendation was from CPC? Yes. Discussion about 13? I think CPC has got $900,000 in it. CPA has $900,000 in it. So 6780 is probably not going to break the bank. Tom or David? I, I think it's part of their overall plan, the, the, plan, the pathways committee plan, Scott. And, and yep. uh, I, I would think it's just a continuation of what, they're, what they've been striving to do. So, yep. you know, it, it was interesting in today's Mass Live, um, Mount, Toby, Mount Toby trails were highlighted. Um, yep. And I bet you there's a... There's a lot of residents in the town of Sunderland that have like, hiked the Mount Toby area. So, great point. Oh, definitely are. David, any concerns about this one? No, I think that one's fine. Okay, motion to recommend. Motion. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three to zero, please. Okay, that gets us back to two, three, four, five, six, seven, right, Jeff? Yes. And so let's 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 dive right into Article Three. That's the budget. And I know it's a little late in the game to be plowing into a budget. It's only quarter of eight, so we should be done by about ten. <laughs> that said. School Committee and Frontier both took actions last week. I appreciate uh, Peter and Jess and Jessica and Ben uh, participating tonight. Um, we also had uh, some revenue discussions. 
And Jeff, our current, our current, well, maybe let's just, let's just go through what the elementary school and Frontier have done. And maybe uh, Peter or, or Jessica could weigh in on what the elementary school approach was. And this way here, I don't have to stammer through it. I did listen though, by the way, I was on my phone driving. I could hear it all, but I couldn't call, I couldn't speak for some reason using my, my, my phone phone on that app. Sure. Um, so both of the, I'll, I'll start off and give my understanding of the overview. That's what you'd like. Um, please. But both the elementary school and uh, the regional school okay. revisited their, their budgets um, okay. based on the recommendation or the assumption that there would be a 20% uh, reduction in general budget ones by now. I was looking um, to the end. And both had decided to um, to le level fund their budgets based on their fiscal a copy of the draft budgets. Uh, so they had come back to us, and I believe for the elementary school that was uh, a reduction of one hundred forty-four thousand seven hundred and thirteen dollars and okay. uh for frontier it was uh, seventy three thousand seven hundred and ninety dollars see what we can more to go back to, to le uh fiscal year twenty funding it wasn't, levels. It wasn't um, in multiple I think somebody needs to mute their line on with thank you Okay, so Peter, Jess, Keith, you want to want to weigh in on the process and the ramifications? Uh, I'll, I'll give a shot here. The process was um, that you had gone back some time. You would first ask for like a three to five percent cut, and then uh, which would have been in in the elementary school's case something in the range of ninety to one hundred and fifty thousand. Um, our budget that we had initially approved called for an increase of 144000 over the FY20 budget. Um, you know, that took some thinking about how to do that. And in the meantime, you called for, I guess, change your um, guidance and called for uh, something equivalent to a 20% cut in our Chapter 70 money, which is the state aid for education. And that would have worked out to be $175,000 reduction. Um, the school had, you know, all along they'd been thinking about how to approach this. Um, you know, everyone's aware that nobody knows what the numbers are actually going to turn out to be. Um, and so there was some hesitation on, uh, going public with things that would be cutting programs and personnel, because once you go public with that stuff, you can't ungo public, um, if it doesn't turn out to be necessary um but it also realized that uh, you know we're we're getting to the end of budget season here and we have to do something and so uh we had a meeting on thursday night and similar to the meetings uh, that were on tuesday for frontier and on wednesday for deerfield uh the administration meaning darius and uh shelley the director of business services uh presented budgets uh, as they'd done for frontier and done for deerfield that were level funded um, in our case, what that meant was, um, it was actually a process that starting with, uh, the remainder of FY 20, because ever since COVID sort of became a reality in terms of how it was changing our, our whole operations, uh, they've had a freeze on, on basically any sort of, uh, discretionary spending. Um, and then on this past Thursday, Shelley laid out the numbers from that, and it seemed that we will have uh, her best estimate at this point when all the, uh, the the bills are paid is we will have approximately $45,000 left over. Uh, the recommendation on that was twofold, that we take uh, 20,000 of that to apply for technology. And what this is in particular is the uh, making sure that we basically get to one-on-one -on -one with our kids and uh, 
their uh, devices, meaning either iPads for the younger kids or Chromebooks for the older kids, and one-on-one, -on -one meaning that, that we have a device for each kid, so that that's obviously important if you are doing remote learning, but once we're back in the building, uh, where up until now there's been a whole lot of sharing, um, that's the kind of thing that under, you know, even if you're you're back in the building, they're still trying to keep distance between the kids and cut down on the touching and cut down on the use of the same device and so on. So that um, spending 20000 of the 45000 that will be available in this fiscal year uh, makes a real good start at um, uh, getting to that one-to-one -one point. And then there is a general light item in the 21 budget for technology and hopefully using that to uh, cover the uh, the remainder of that. Uh, the other 25000 that would be available at the end of this year is just going to be rolled over to uh, be applied uh, in the 21 budget. Um, so that if we look then at, at FY21, sort of the first thing was, can we get down to uh, the same level funding that the other two schools had already done? Um, and I had my doubts there because the one thing that was the case with both Frontier and Deerfield was they have significantly more reserves in the way of, in particular, the school choice accounts uh, than we did. So I was not at all optimistic going to the meeting. But what Shelley presented was, uh, first of all, you used the uh, uh, 25000 from uh, rolled over from uh, FY20. Uh, the next thing is you basically take any, uh, you take the increase in uh, staffing of uh, 55,000 for a special ed team leader that we had proposed and you uh, do away with that. You look at all the expense increases that can be uh, reversed and you uh, do away with them. And that was another 13,000. And that got you up to about, 50,000 short of getting us back to level funded. And so then what in fact seems to have been the case is that this year uh, we are expecting to get a roughly 80,000 more in school choice revenue than expected because we've had some kids that have had, we've had some school choice kids that have had uh, fairly significant special ed needs and the way the school choice works is that those needs are paid for by the sending town. So we get that uh, revenue at uh, the end of the year, it's called the SPED increment. And the estimate now is that that will be in the vicinity of 80,000 um, and using a little bit over 50,000 to get us to a level funded budget seem to be within you know, a reasonable realm of, 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 of handling it. And so, uh, that's what was proposed. Now, I'll, you know, it was clear at the meeting and it was clear in what I passed on to your board, Scott, that uh, this is still $30,000 short of the um, uh, the $175,000 cut that was uh, asked for that represented a 20% uh, cut in state aid to education. Um, I think there you know, basically uh, the recommendation for the administration was that to go there, we've got to talk about uh, program cuts, uh, that there was, you know, if, if push comes to shove, you know, that will have to be done, but there was a real reluctance to do that at the, at the present time. And so the hope is that the 144,000 that's been reduced will be enough to uh, make the puzzle work that we're trying to put together here. Um, and again, we've been straightforward in saying that. And, and um, you know, I hope that's the case because as we've talked prior to this, you know, one of the concerns is that if you start to, to cut programs, then it, uh, it, it, uh, it definitely has a, a negative effect on the, on the school, on the way you market the school, on the possible income you get from school choice or, a possible loss of school choice kids to other towns and so on. So uh, we think we've done a good job in taking a pretty big number out of the budget. And, um, you know, I sure hope that the town we, we can put together 
an overall plan that works without having to do more than that. Right. So, I, you know, I, I think that's a summary of, of uh, the situation and glad to answer questions or whatever, if, if there are. Well, if I could, if I could weigh in, go ahead, Keith. Uh, I just want to speak for Frontier for just a second. We uh, approached it in that we were developing their budget that any decision we make at the frontier level is going to have a direct impact on the, the town. So we're developing that budget in coordination, like thoughtfully in coordination with all the towns. And the goal was to uh, frontiers in, in good financial shape going into it. It was actually a good budget year. Imagine that. Um, but it was a zero budget going forward. And then we're going to maximize the E&D, which the elementary schools don't have the option of in, in and the idea that next year is going to be just as bad. And if we can maximize the savings at the, the district level, then that can help the budget next year as well. So it sounds, it sounds like the administration's taken a, a, the holistic approach, right? Talk about the, you've heard it before, the, the, the feeder system at the elementary and then frontier at the next level. And how do we look at it budgetarily as the, total package in that impact versus this school versus that school, this town's issue versus that town's issue. Correct. The ba basic idea I think was as much, if we can reduce the assessments as much as possible, that will only help the elementary schools in each town. Yeah. Great. And to Peter's point earlier, you know, the town was uh, initial response was from some MMA guidance. And then in looking at the real revenues going into the state, uh, we simply said, Let's take a look at state reduction, right? If there's a state reduction, let's have that state reduction uh, be the target. The numbers were very, very similar. And I think it's important to bear in mind in that state reduction, the town on the revenue side, general government is taking the same approach with the 20% target of reduction. Uh, that said, uh, no way did we get after the town's contribution to the elementary school. We thought it'd be more respectful to simply say formulaically, you know, look at what you're going to get from the state. That's where the, that's where the worst hurt's going to be likely. And, you know, work from that versus a, a, a dollar value or, you know, a percentage from us. So that, that's, where, that's where this came from. Tom or David, you want to weigh in? Um, I, my, my question is in the budget, what are, do they have the school budget? Are there salary increases included? COLA and or steps um for the elementary school I think those are for the elementary school we have uh we actually signed a uh a new th three-year contract with the ias the instructional aides uh last year and so this would be year two of that contract which has uh the the cola and the steps that uh were agreed to there for the uh, teachers, we signed a one-year contract, which expires at the end of this school year. Um, there is, uh, therefore, no existing contract for FY21, um, and yet there is uh, there are funds in the budget uh, in anticipation of uh, what might be required. Um, but as I said, there's at this point, it's still, you know, there's ongoing negotiations. And Frontier, I believe, is in the middle of that contract, and there has been no discussion of um, reducing COLA or STEPS. Okay. David, you want to weigh in at all? Uh, no, at the moment. Okay. Uh, thank you guys for given us the, the backstory as well as the effort on the work that school's done. I want to pivot the conversation to the general expense budget and have us go through uh, those sections uh, that have some impact. Jeff and I have spoken a couple of times about revenues and Jeff, I see under the revenue, sh well, let me stay focused on expenses, right? We got a whole bunch of zeros all the way down to, so the select board, is actually down 9,775 across our expenses and salaries. The select board voted to cut its salary to zero. Uh, moderator cut his salary uh, and to zero and town administrator, town administrator expenses, a reduction of 600. 
So we were actually down 97.75 in that, in that group. So a reduction of 4.4% for the select board category. Jeff, did I capture that correctly? Yes. Do you, do you want me Tom to- Tom or David, any discuss? Yeah, sure. Put it right up there. It gets me to stop writing on the screen with my pen. <laughs> Oh, look at that. Ta da. So, next down from there is the accountant. Uh, contracted service expense or assessment from the COG itself is actually going up. And that's not an increase in hours, sadly. Um, that's an increase in their rate. So, they're, they're continue to be viable, as uh, Bob Dean has made abundantly clear. The second line is uh, uh, software service, li software license, correct, Jeff? Yes. Assessors, we're at zeros right now. And Jeff, can we have the discussion before we go through each of the sections? Can we have the discussion, uh, board members, about the personnel committee's recommendation? Because even though this has zeros in it, are these salaries for the administrative assistant, for the assessor, or yourself, or Jeff, or uh, uh, selectman secretary, are those colas and steps all baked into this spreadsheet? Yes, not not for me because I'm a contract employee, um, so mine are, are separate. But yes, the um, believe, yeah, th this is the the recommendation from the personnel committee, um, and baked into each of the non-represented employees that the personnel committee uh, w was asked to, to provide information on. The spreadsheet includes uh, the recommendations for wage adjustments and uh, COLA. Okay, so the notice for the personnel committee is that our, our COLAs, hang on just a second. So 2% is the recommendation from personnel. And that is sprinkled across the budget and it equals $9,271 and four cents. And then the second part of that recommendation is adjusted where current salaries are found to be non-competitive. And I know David, this has been protracted, but I'm going to, I'm going to drop this, you know, right in your, right in your, right in your strike zone. <laughs> Yep. So there's a hand, there's a handful there's a handful it says some town office administration staff some library staff police clerical town highway and part time firefighter slash inspector are all so it's one two three four five six seven positions move somewhere up in that wage comparison scale toward yep. the middle of the competitive range is that correct oh there it right. is right yeah, that was the goal to, to get them up to the mid, the mid section of our competitive group. And in that discussion, and there's a lot of meetings, and there's a lot of stuff going on there. Are there any outliers who are simply not in that competitive group at all at all, like well below? We had those years past. I'm just curious about this year. Uh, I don't think so. I think this was trying to bring the last of them up to that, you know, to that mid section. Okay, so a 2% COLA across town employees represents $9,271. And then this move represents 25783. Is this the year we want to make that move? Having That's made moves so, in years prior? Well, up until, you know, so many months ago, it would have been the year to do it. But now I, I couldn't agree more. That's actually. the question. Uh, and so people who are watching or may watch it in the future, this was also a year where there was active discussion about increasing the town's contribution to the health care by another 5% because it looked like uh, through uh, good times uh, and good planning, uh, we, were, we would have been in that position. But that was quickly removed, Not even didn't even make it to pen and ink. Tom, what do you think? I got a question for you, Mr. Chair. Sure. So we are going to town meeting in, in a very um, unsure position. And it, oh, yeah. that feels strong. That feels strange to me because 
typically we know when we go to town meeting after we get the house one and we get the, the, the house to put out their numbers, the governor puts out the numbers and the state Senate puts out his numbers. Then they, they meet in conference and they have a committee and then, then, then a few representatives and a few senators in a back room make up a final number and they send us out the final number. But typically the numbers that we use are, are conservative numbers. Mm -hmm. So, so this year we're going to go to town meeting and we, and, and, and Peter said a couple of times, well, where are you guys getting your numbers from? And I, I, and we really don't, our best thing we can tell Peter is that we're using all, we're using the guidance that we are finding from MMA and from the government and from people that we know, and we're using our best, basically we're using best case scenario. Okay. So we go, we go into this and now we, we put in a, I don't, I still would like to talk about the, 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 the salaries. Mm -hmm. um, and cause as far as I know, we haven't laid anybody off in the sound of Sunderland, but we're, we're all still, they're also, everybody's still working. Um, but I, for, but I'm sure there's residents in the town of Sunderland that probably haven't been to work in 62 days. Um, we, we know that the big employer to the south of us just told all their employees that everyone from the top down that they're going to have to take five days with no pay. Okay. Um, furlough. Um, so when I, when I look at the, the 2%, I'm, I struggle with that. Um, I struggle. So I, I, I try to think about how, how, how we can make it fair. So if we vote the 2%, if we, we go to town meeting, we vote the 2% and four months from now, and, and we, at July 1, we start paying the higher rate. Four, four months from now, we find out that we aren't going to come close to our revenues. What do we do at that point, Mr. Chair? Yeah, we only have one course at that point. You'd expect that free cash is not certified and only allows you to use uh, stabilization. Okay. And stabilization for uh, operating expenses is, you know, a very, very dangerous slope. I've been on dangerous slopes. That's a very dangerous slope. So, so, so we, 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 we get to that point in, in four or five months and we find out that we can't meet our, so do we start do, and, and, and I'm going to use some terminology that, be, but do we furlough employees? Do we tell, do we, do we uh, lay off in, in people? Um, do we lay off teachers in the middle of the year? What options do we have? And, and I'm, I'm just trying to come up with what, how we should budget, you know? And, and I, and, and, and again, and, and bottom line, I know what, I know it would have to be done. So, so I guess my question is if we appropriate the, the 2% pay raise, does it automatically start being paid out to everybody? Or do we, do we say, okay, look, if, if, if the numbers come in the way we, we had anticipated after three or four months and, and they look like the numbers are returning and, and we can, do we then, do we said, okay, do we then pay retroactively that, that money that, that we held back? I mean, can we do that? That's a good question, mechanically. You, you know what I'm trying to say, aren't you, David? I, I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I, I'm, yeah, I'm, tr I'm trying to question. say, if, if we have the money, I don't have a problem. But I, I don't know if we're going to have the money. And, so, and, Tom, and, go ahead. Please finish. Yeah, no, I, 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 no, I'll ramble. I'll ramble for a long time on this because I don't know the answers. I do that same kind of like verbal thinking as well. I actually was on a project today and a guy walked in and said, you talking to me? I said, actually, no, I was talking to the hole in the ceiling, trying to figure out where the wires are, but that's a different <laughs> conversation. Um, right. in, in this case here, our next, so in the swiftest of years, our certification, Schedule A certification, free cash, et cetera, is in our swiftest years are December, January, late, late December, early January. 
This year, we fell way behind for a host of reasons. I don't know what the next, so anyway, that would be the next threshold where we would know other than revenue forecasting, meaning, I'm sorry, actual revenues received by treasurer collector and distributed by the state. So our threshold for knowing would be basically mid-year. Right. So you'd vote a, you'd vote a budget based on flat, or you would bake in the you would bake so it needed appropriation, right? So yep. if you're gonna do two percent, you can you can bake that into the budget but withhold it until confirmation of something in the future. And that would be December. If not, it would simply not be expended and used free cash. Yeah, I you see I, I you know I, I understand, hmm. you know, Pete I understand what, what Peter's been saying about um you know, the budgets and people and what it tells them. But what, and, and I, I look at it and, and I, and I, this is how I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it and, and, and I, I know what Peter's saying. I know I, Peter, Peter, um, he has the, the heart of a humanitarian right now. Um, and I think we all do. Um, I, my, my, my problem is that my, my practical part says, like I, I see if if we don't if we don't do something, and when when we get to s November, December, October, whatever you pick a day, and we realize that we can't pay our budget, I, I'm sorry, but it, and it and it's been it, and, and it's been proven by 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 looking at these numbers, what drive what drives our budget labor. So if you're not doing anything to help try to control labor, the cost of labor, then then work. If and what are you going to do? Where are you going to cut? It, you you can't cut buying paper because we don't buy a lot of paper any longer. So where do you cut? So in September, October, we're going to be or November and pick a date. I don't know what that is, but then you'll be just you're just shifting. So I'd I'd rather be more conservative. And say if you get to November, December, and you're going to make, meet your numbers, yeah, then 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 increase and, and pay that back money. Um, but I think paying out a two percent raise right now, boy, it's, a I I think that's that sounds a uh, that that's that's a very 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 bad optics. Um, and and I I think we we stood we've stood behind the town stood behind all their their employees. Um, during during this the, the last sixty two to two days in particular, and I hope we can stand through it with a until we're done with this. But if if we want to try to protect as many employees as possible, we really have to look serious seriously look at how much we're spending, on, in in particular on labor. In my opinion. So, Tom, one other mechanism is to simply go zeros across the board, right? Yeah. With these two, with these two items, again, they're sprinkled through. I get it. Uh, that would leave us twenty. That would leave us basically thirty-four thousand dollars. Yeah. The other, the other mechanism isn't to bake it in the budget for July. The other mechanism is to vote it with zeros, fight that at town meeting floor, and then come back with a special when we know what the revenues are and say, okay, now we want to put in, let's assume, let's assume everything's hunky dory, right? Everything's wonderful, sweetness and light. You come back in a special and you say, okay, we left out 2% and this, and we want to put that in on now that we know we have the revenues and it's a, it stands as a warrant article or as an adder to the existing budget. Yeah, I, we do Scott. I, I and and I will deny I will deny that I I have a heart um, when it comes to financial stuff, but <laughs> you can't. It's financial. But if, but if but if if I if if I am a if I am a employee employer, which I am right now as a in a board, um, if I take my employer and put my employee hat on, which I am also, I would want to give our employees hope, and and hope would just say. Okay, if things turn around, they're they're still supporting us, and the money's there. The the money will be coming our way. And if it's not there, if we can't, you know, if 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 the numbers don't don't add up, 
and we've always are been transparent with our numbers. I mean, numbers are numbers. They, they, they're pretty basic for us. And if they don't line up and we say, look at guys, this is what's happened. And we can't release, we can't release the additional funds. And then I would, I would hope that they would say, well, at least they made, they tried to make a commitment to us. We all have our jobs. We're all, we're all gainfully employed and we're, we're, you know, we're put, you know, putting a paycheck in the bank. I, but I think that you, you, we, we shown our hand that we support our employees. Um, but we try to support, but right now we just have to be careful with our money. So I, that's how I look at it right now, Scott. So uh, from a mechanics perspective, Jeff, the current expense line has the 34054 35 in it, right? The expense budget has it baked into it, all yeah. sprinkled yep. throughout those positions. Correct. Okay, let's go to another section. I need to canoodle on that, Tom. Thanks. I appreciate the perspective. So our next yeah. set of zeros and reductions are under treasurer collector. Another reduction of 2295, primarily again driven out of treasurer collector expenses and uh, postage is down. So, so Mr. Chair, can I? So your zeros are just changes from the ask, right? In the C uh, change. Oh, sorry, under CP, right? Yeah. So the so the request, right? The request is C O. The, ori the original so, request was C. The original CE. Yeah. And then change. So, so basically, and then revise. basically, so I'm I'm looking from the change from last year, FY10, 20. I'm 20 to FY21. Mm -hmm. Right. So, but and when you, you when you're saying zero, that's just from the requested budget. Correct. No, exactly. There's no. That's why I asked about the wages being baked in, Tom. You're right. Yeah. If we're be looking at change from final is going to be CF. Yes. Yeah. And then, then there's so it's a value, then there's a percentage, then you've got 21. Yeah. All right. I'm on I'm on board. So the next for us heading down. Jeff, oh, it's, those, that font's too small. I was going to say, we need, we need uh, 20 scale, Scott. Yeah, I know. I got Is it. So I'm, no, I've got it. I can read it. Just I have to, every 20 minutes, stare at something far away for 20 seconds. We need a, we need a plotter to put it out on a there you 24 go. by 24. So, Jeff, the next pinch point for us, we know we have not a pinch point. Next increase for us is really going to be centered around uh, town clerk and the fact that we have an election, correct? Yep. 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 I see that one. And then next un under elections. So again, salary is baked in there right now at 5,400. Elections registrars, committees and boards, CONCOM, again, Zeros, minus 300, planning board expense for 50 adder, down to town buildings, $324 for energy, for operations. We had this conversation earlier today, Jeff, about highway garage and highway garage energy. That was basically a split of an existing one line, is that correct? Correct. Yeah. So if you, so you look, look, yeah, there's basically a thousand dollars difference. It was just added to the energy line and most of it was taken away from the expense line. Got it. But I'll, I'll fix that in the next version. So it's clearer. Yep. Thank you. Uh, an additional 5,000 for energy for the library. We have to talk with them about that. See why, why 5,100, especially since we just signed long-term energy. Well, of course they had usage increase this past year with some equipment that was offline being put back 
online. So I think that, as I recall, that was re realistic uh, straight usage. Um, contingency is still there at zero. Energy solar is at zero. Police department. We still have an additional headcount in here, Jeff? Yes. So you guys, uh, other board members, remember the chief was asking for an additional officer starting in, I think, mid-year, November to December. Uh, feelings about that? We had requested a schedule and we had requested a schedule. I'm of the mindset that there's, there's no way you're going to add staff in this environment. I don't, right. Um, if we unless it's a direct replacement. If we can't give colas, I can't see how we can put a straight face asked for an ad to staff. Bingo. Jeff, could you respond to the, the chief tomorrow and, and ask, uh, let him, let him know. I mean, Tom, how do you feel about that? I, I think um, we have to concentrate on the people that we have right now, Scott. Yep. So uh, Jeff, let, let the chief know and we'll remove this. Okay. Yep. Again, we've got the 2% in wages. I see that department expense, uh, $3,800 in department expense. I have to ask about that. Down to fire. Uh, $7,950. I think that our chief described that as call volume. Remember, these are call fighters and this volume specific. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, I believe that was correct. That's we have to ask about that as well. Building inspector salary, since we're in negotiations, that should be flat. Or is this the alternate? No, this is not the alternate. This is the salary salary. Yeah, I, I believe that that was the requested salary. Got it. So is that from Tom or is that from our current alternate? Uh, Tom. So since Tom's not here, let's make that zero. Not zero in dollars, but last year's value. Yep. Tom and David, right? We still have to, we're talking about shared services and we're using basically an hourly rate right now. Yes, Scott. Yep. Can we get down to the remainder of civil defense? So there's an additional $1,000 for radio system. Um, all right. Uh, yeah, that is, that is, uh, I believe the assessment. Mm -hmm. Yep. From, from the county. Yes. Yep. Uh, we talked about wages again, highway and seasonal. Snow and ice is zero. Hang on, you're at highway maintenance expense, 4,009. Have to ask George about that. And district 393. Landfill monitoring, $600, what? We have to talk about, again, global piece about wages. And expense was electronics. Elementary, we've done. Frontier, we've done. Tech, we're waiting for an answer. Uh, benefits and insurance. I see retirement assessment at 26, an additional 26. Yes. Straight assessment again, no additional, none of that. Town employees medical. Uh, again, uh, we have in the past had available one 
family or two family and two singles or some kind of mix as a recommendation from the treasurer collector to have in reserve in the event somebody comes on to medical, not that we'll be adding staff, but you could be impacted by someone who's a town employee, uh, married to or spouse losing a, a job and moving on to us. OPEB is level. And then town insurance. This is the email we saw from Chubb for earlier in this week. Uh, that actually was not included in this figure yet. This is um, our, our regular Cabot risk. Uh, my okay. So can we can we call them up and beat them up for a little bit? We can try. Good. It's always good to try. Cog assessments, the only thing that's up, $253. Uh, district veterans assessment, not bad, but soldiers benefits. You know, in the current environment, would it make sense for us to, because we are charged with front loading the soldier and vets benefits and then are reimbursed by the Commonwealth. Does it make sense for us to put a placeholder here or just hold it and spend uh, as required? And if we simply have to transfer in, we can do that later in the year. Absolutely, Scott. So hold it level funded. This one always, you know, it's just a talk to you, we're talking about hard strings, right? But, it depends on who moves into town. Well, exactly. You don't know. Or who moves out of town. Exactly. Right. Okay, waste treatment is a no-brainer. That's all paid to fees. Uh, interest. Jeff, we have to find out uh, if this is the last year of public safety and library. And my intuition is that it is our final year for those two. And then we got a fire truck that we added. Sewer relining is paid for by sewer users. Energy principal is paid for uh, through the town authorization, and that's it. So right now, uh, undoctored, unadultered, uh, there's a two hundred ninety-nine thousand. Wait, 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 wait. Five hundred thirty-three thousand. Jeff, can we update this and have it for a review for later this week so we can vote on it with a total number? Yes. Yep. If we also flip over to the revenue sheet, please. Tom or David, anything jump out about those expenses or the questions that were raised tonight? No, I mean, it's a, we can see why they're there. So, okay. There's nothing mysterious about it. So is the prerogative of the board prerogative of the board to pull out the COLA and the wage adjustments or, and call a special if we have the revenue or leave them baked in and not pay them? Mm. That's a good question because we never really, I don't think we've had to decide to do something like this before. And I'm trying to think of what's going to give us the most flexibility. Uh, my preference, I mean, mechan mechanically speaking, my preference yeah. would be a special. It would be to well, pull, it out of the, pull it out of the budget, and if we and find out we get revenues, and then have a special and put them right back in. Because I have a hunch that we're going to have to have a special anyway, just because of all the stuff that's going on. I think there's just too much to not expect to have at least one. That's fair. You know, so I, I think that's fine. And then once we see, because, you know, maybe things turn out better and, you know, we can go back and, ad and address some things that we had to pull out. Mm -hmm. Fair. These are unfortunately unprecedented times. Right, right. And I think that the thing about the, the, the raise part is we're trying to do that to keep in line with our competitors. Well, they're going through the same kinds of issues that we're going through. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I don't think... You know, normally under, in a regular year, if you did that, you'd be worried about falling even farther behind. But I don't think that particular issue is going to be a problem this year. Good point. Tom, keep canoodling on that and we'll, uh, we'll get this figured out. 
Uh, well, uh, again, I, I, um, what, what I would say is that then you, we should, if, you, if you're going to take the cola out of the town, then you need to take it out of the schools. Well, that's, that's one of the points because this, while this is part of the labor, it's a tiny minuscule amount of the overall labor costs that we face in the town. To put it into perspective. So the 2% is $9,271.04. Yeah. That, you know, I, I agree. I don't, I don't see where, where, that's, where that's an impossible thing to overcome. The 25783 eh, that's that that's a discussion a point right there. Yep. But I would agree with you, Tom, in that respect. So postpone the salary adjustments uh, coming out of uh, that wage survey and simply have the 2% COLA in this budget? Yeah, I want to have mean, something for... Jeff to plug in numbers into because when we populate the spreadsheet, it's important that it's yep. accurate. I mean, you can do that. That's fine. I don't know. What do you think, Tom? Oh, I... I mean, otherwise we go with the, you know, mentally target a special if things change. And, and, and again, I, I, I think if you had a a uniform, if you had a uniform approach, and and if and if we really had a uniform approach, we'd include the schools and the police union contracts. And 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 I'm I'm sorry, but there's absolutely no reason that you can't go to the um, some you know, any, any negotiating group right now and say, um, Hey, it's going to be tough last year, next year. And this is what we're looking at. Do you, so do you want to save jobs or what do you want to, if, I mean, that's, again, that's, I, I don't want to say to, that our town employees, once again, we're going to balance a budget on, on the 20 people that don't that aren't represented by the union. It's not fair to them. Correct. It's really not fair. So if you're going to, if the school's on board, yeah. But if the, if the school's not on board, I, I find it awful hard to, 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 to beat up on our town employees because they, they give an awful lot. Mr. Chair, could I speak to the school for a second? Hey, Greg. Uh, if I may, um, I, I agree that it's not fair to uh, town employees to, to take a hit year after year. Um, and, and I understand that, uh, you know, we are in unprecedented times and the state has been backing away from education, uh, shifting the burden onto the towns. Um, I do want to point out, and, and David Pierce is part of the uh, negotiations for this as well, so, so he well knows uh, there's three other towns and there's a total of uh, three different unions, and uh, we absolutely can have a conversation, um, but at some point they also have a lot of agency in deciding how to address this. Do they want to uh, go in the direction that Tom is indicating he would prefer that they went, which is to accept uh, a renegotiation of the contract to allow uh, same number of people to be employed, or uh, would they prefer to say, okay, well, uh, these are hard won benefits and uh, we don't want to step back from them. And if, if we have to reduce the number of teachers temporarily or our other employees temporarily, uh, you know, we have to respect their agency to there. So uh, we just have to be aware of how much leverage we actually have in the situation. Good point, Greg. If I may add to that. Sure. Um, just from a philosophical point of view, one thing to keep in mind is if, uh, and Greg mentioned that the, the, the four towns in the greater region, basically if one of the big problems with the elementary school was the difference between the 
um, the middle school pay scale and the high school pay scale work that we did to try to, to close that gap. And if we ask the town employees to take a COLA, a reduction in COLA, but the uh, region does not do that, then that will further exacerbate the problem that we were trying to deal with before. So if we do ask that, I think it would have to be a coordinated effort between the towns and the region. Another really good point, just kind of sheds the light as to how many layers there are to peel this onion back. If we pivot to revenues, I see the sheets up. So on, under the local receipts, it seems to me that 20% of local receipts in a given year is a little steep. Certainly from state aid, yes, I can see a 10% reduction in local receipts. Um, again, there's a little bit of a lag. We tend to conservatively estimate those regardless. It helps fuel a little bit of our free cash, uh, but also it is something that I wouldn't see dropping off precipitously in, in any given year. A couple of year trend, absolutely. 5%, 10% a year and the second year makes perfect sense. But I could certainly support uh, taking that 20% reduction of local receipts and turning it to 10. That'll add a little, a little bit of a, onto our estimate. And there's risk to that. I get it. But it's not like the state aid. Uh, this is a little, a little uh, softer landing trajectory than what we're seeing and reading about. You guys have thoughts about that? It's not going to be a rush on buying a bunch of new cars. Yeah, we're certainly going to lose <clears throat> meals receipts. There's no doubt about that. Uh, yep. But beyond that. You know, a 20% reduction in a given year. If you want to go with that value and this be our revenues, then we've got to understand what our gap, our gap actually is. So it looks like our gap is basically a quarter of a million right now. Is that correct, Jeff? Yeah. Yeah, 253. Yeah, I mean, we could reduce that to 10. But again, it's still a quarter of a million dollars. If we go into town meeting with $550,000 in free cash, we use a quarter of a million. Uh, we try to push 200 forward uh, to have any kind of free cash generation for next year. Uh, there's nothing left for warrant articles except for stabilization. That's just the mechanics right. of it. If we yeah. use up all of our free cash this year, we set us up for utter failure next year. Yeah. Yeah. We definitely should not use all our free cash. Just saying, those are the numbers that are out there right now based on the yeah. expense request and the available revenues. So Jeff, can I ask you to amend the revenue sheet, amend the, expense sheet as we talked about tonight and then have it for us sometime tomorrow so we can continue this discussion individually with you absolutely and as far as the just for now leaving in the the wage adjustments and cola um i'm not of that mind but if the majority of the board is then that's what we'll do um i would say maybe the cola but not the adjustment. Send it to us both ways, Jeff. Okay. Yeah, we'll see how it looks. Um, I, and, and to me, and again, I, I, I've been through these budget times before. I, I see how, I, I see how, I see how, um, we can hide behind union contracts and union bargain, whatever. And I can understand that. And I, I understand the thing about that, but Scott, I tell you, we, we decimated our town office building before. Um, I don't, I don't want that to happen again. And, and right now, I, if you look at our expenses, our expenses, if you look at the school expenses are 70% of the budget, how do you, how do you continue to, to, give colas and, and, and steps to school union employees and not to our non-unionized staff. 
that that is a wrong message to be sending to our people. Agreed. And, and, and you know what? If the union wants to wants to keep the, their increases, that's right. They bargain. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not disputing that. But at the same time, that you can't be. You can't. You have to. If that. If that's their choice, then we have to look like what the budget's going to happen if they keep those increases. Yep. And and that and 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 you're right. I mean, and and the more senior senior people that and they can say, well. I think it's more important that my retirement is, is right now. And I, I, I understand that, but, but to, to ignore, ignore the fact it, it, we're not, we're not serving any purposes. Agreed. But I, uh, and, 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 and that, and that's not, not against anybody. I just don't want to see our, our, our non-unionized staff be put through the mill again. And oh, oh, we can make the budget. Of course, we don't talk about this. We don't talk about the, the the union contracts that are in place or have or in the process of being negotiated. We just know that our non-unionized staff have no contract, so we can cut theirs, and 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 they can't say anything. That's the wrong. That's that's the wrong. That's wrong. That's 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 dead wrong. We're a town. Everybody should share. It's 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 a shared pain or shared. It's a shared pain or gain, and right now it's not that it's not being portrayed like that. If I if I'm a town employee, it's not being that non unionized employee. It's not being presented that way. Good point. In my opinions, I I I. I so and, Jeff, your charge your charge is to find thirty four thousand dollars in expenses to cut so we can afford wages. Pretty easy. It's not going to come from revenues because it's pretty clear we don't have them. So we're going to have to cut them from expenses. That's easy. Just find it. Find it in insurance. Find it in miles of cops driving around. Find it in highway. Find it. Find $34,000 and make sure it goes away so we can protect wages. Scott, I, I, in, in, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's incredulous to me that if people say, well, where are you getting your numbers from? <laughs> our, numbers, our, our numbers are probably the most conservative numbers out there. Yeah, they've been and, pretty accurate. We haven't necessarily patted the lily in a lot of years right. and uh, haven't come up short ever. So I consider that track record worth reiterating to people. Yeah. And, 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 and it's like, you know, we're t and, and again, I, I, I don't want to see one person lose a job. I, you know, and, 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 you know, and, 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 and then we, we start talking about, and we start talking about frontier and they, the first thing they talk about is a music program and the, uh, the fine art program that you, it, and, and, or, and, and it's like, that, that's, that's not what we're talking. There, there's got to be other ways to look at a budget. Right. Okay. So we'll continue working on this and we have one more week. Wait a minute. Where'd my agenda go? It, Scott, we're in the next day, so it's probably no longer valid. That's all right. <laughs> do, 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 do. How about uh, I like rifle through the ream of paper? Why don't I punt and ask for town administrator updates? Sure. I will try and keep it short. Um, we finished the we got all night. Uh, <laughs> the appraisal <laughs> uh, request for quotations. Um, and I wrongly assumed that I would be able to sign that with a vote of the board, but uh, I included that in your packet and I did print out an extra copy that's sitting on the printer right now. Um, if you want to vote, uh, we got uh, two, two responses. Uh, the low bid was $900 for both an appraisal and review appraisal and just compensation report. And this is related to the it's along North Main Street. Well, that's better than 50 grand. I like it. You can get 34 out of the expenses now. Well, 
<laughs> Depends on how many properties we're actually getting appraised. <laughs> like okay. Close to 50 grand. <laughs> um, Very good. You want that in the form of a motion to authorize? Authorize the chair to sign? Yes, please. Motion. Second. And I just picked it up off the printer. Thank you. Nice. Motions That's made and seconded to authorize the chair to sign the appraisal. Uh, quoted a little less than a thousand bucks. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. My hand is up. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, uh, Jeff. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Um, I was wondering who was printing things up while we were meeting. <laughs> it, um, related again to the North Main Street project is a poll hearing that Eversource wanted to schedule. Um, I didn't know if we would just... In, their advertising requirements, they have to send out notices to abutters um, two Mondays in later in June after town meeting would be uh, June 22nd or June 29th. I didn't know if you want to take any action on that tonight. Uh, you want to try the 29th? Okay. Um, do you have to Tom, take a David, to schedule? 29th for a poll hearing? Yeah, that's fine. Why not? That's an easy one. I agree. That would be, and it would be this way too. Wonderful. Um, and then the, the last two things is this Friday is, well, next Monday is Memorial Day. Um, this Friday is the Memorial Day ceremony at the cemetery. Uh, it's scheduled for 6 p.m. It's going to be smaller. Um, because of obviously the emergency, uh, there's going to be social distancing, mask wearing, but uh, it's going to be televised and uh, zoomed if people want to zoom into the meeting. Um, although participants will be muted so that everybody can hear what's going on. Um, and that's going to be at 6 p.m. at the cemetery. Um, there's going to be a, a bugler and an abbreviated uh, ceremony for, for Memorial Day. So I just wanted to put a plug and it will be live streamed, I believe on channel 12 from FCAT. Okay. Thank you, FCAT. And then the last thing is, I think if I still have my list here, yeah, the, um, the town clerk joined and I, if she wanted to give another pitch for how people can find out about uh, early voting and, and mail-in voting for ballots to try and um, keep keep the in-person voting tight again due to emergency and social distancing. I would love to uh, if people can go on the website and I think it's better to do the find it fast and put in early voting application. They can download it, fill it out, get it to me. They can call me 665-1442 and I will mail one an application, then mail it back, and then I mail the ballot. Um, whatever is easier, I will do it. Thank you. And then lastly, we, we did have a meeting about town meeting logistics and how that might work. Um, and that was the clerk and myself and the moderator and the police chief and the recreation director. Um, and I'll be very brief, but I think what we're looking at is taking the back half of the parking lot uh, behind the town office building and then out into the field there. And part of the consideration is uh, ADA and wheelchair accessibility and having paved surfaces um, so that, that people can have seating and not needing to go across the grass. Um, so working with FCAT on the sound system and, and have preliminary plans for what that might look like and we're gonna meet again um, next week to nail those down. Perfect. Let me know what you need for utility support out there. Thank you. Uh, board updates. I think we covered the stuff I had, so. Okay. Tom, you want to add anything? Um, I would say that, um, Ben has been working with Sarah on getting the Sunderland Elementary School students involved with a uh, 
community project and uh, I think it'll be, um, I, if it works out, I think it'd be a great addition to the town and probably keep going forward. So I would wholeheartedly uh, hope that they can make it happen. Nice. Uh, there was a capital planning committee two weeks ago. There's another one tomorrow. Uh, there was a site visit uh, at the public safety complex to meet with the chief on the site to understand what a uh, couple of his requests were. It was very, very helpful. Uh, we'll be meeting tomorrow and hopefully have a budget ready to go. Or excuse me, a recommendation ready to go for the capital budget. That'll be for our next meeting. Um, and that's all that I have. Memorial Day, of course, is Monday. Again, the parade is not happening. There is going to be a service, a memorial service at the Riverside Cemetery, six o'clock on Friday. Don't, don't pile down there with a whole bunch of people. We're trying to keep it uh, to officials and we'll record it and uh, keep the uh, memories of those uh, who've given uh, their most to Sunderland. Um, fair due. Our annual town meeting is the 6th at 4, and annual elections are the same day, the 6th at 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Really take the, trust me, as someone who hasn't taken her heed, take her heed and do what she says. Petition for your mail-in ballot and uh, do what you can to help everybody else out. Okay. So, Mr. Any Chair, pearls of wisdom. Um, I don't have pearls yeah. of wisdom, but um, the other day, come um, on now. The uh, the other day, we asked that uh, we get the the names of our graduating seniors from Frontier and from the sixth grade. So we have we yep. have a list, um, and I would I would like to to read them and read their names into the record, if I could, please. But please um, go ahead. There are a couple names that I may have trouble with. Um, uh huh. So, uh, so I may need help with that. But our first is our our uh, Sunderland seniors that are graduating from Frontier, and we have ten this year. And and I know that Frontier is still hoping to hold an outdoor graduation. Um, but I would like to uh, to let let them know that um, your family are awful proud of you. Graduating from high school is a, is, a, is a major accomplishment, and um, and we hope that you have are eagerly awaiting your journey forward. May not be the easiest start with the COVID, but uh, uh, so Kaylee, Mandy, Gabe, Grace, Ben. Okay, Michael, Hendon, Owen, and Spencer, we all wish you the utmost success and congratulations for um, the accomplishment of graduating from high school. Our Sunderland sixth graders um, go on the frontier next year is a big step for you. That a much longer bus ride getting across the river. Um, and um, and I can just tell you that however big Frontier looks on your first day when you go there, it's going to, when you leave there, like these uh, 10 seniors, it's going to look exponent, exponentially smaller because you'd have six years to learn that. But congratulations and thank you for being in Sunderland sixth grade. Going to Sunderland Elementary with our great teachers, Andrew, Benjamin, Aaron, Tyler, Addison, Clinton, McCavery, Noah, Austin, Dint, Alexander, Diego, Beckett, Greta, McLean, Evan, Evelyn, Keith, William, Eric, Rami, London, Connor, Caitlin. Bowden, Dylan, Genesis, Nathan, Jacob, Catherine, Hayden, Charlotte, Benjamin, Lisa, Lily, and Phelan. Congratulations. And, uh, nice job.
Thank you, Jeff, for getting those names for us. Okay. okay. Thanks, Tom, as well as Ben for and Jeff for those. I appreciate that. Tom, you're right. It is. These are um, benchmarks on that long lifeline that we hope every one of these has, every one of these uh, great kids has. So we'll check back in in 20 years and see how they're doing. I hope they do. Okay. Any other discussion? If not, let's end this madness. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion. We have a motion. I saw Dave's hand up. Second. Brilliant. All those in favor? Aye.